people, everyone. We are at a very interesting time right now because we finally get to talk about the iPhone 13 Pro and see how this phone holds up in 2023. Now, one thing that kind of hits home to me personally about this phone is that this has been the iPhone I've been using pretty much since the end of 2021. So from the end of 2021 to all of 2022 and now so far into 2023, this has been the phone I've been using primarily every single day. And I even own an iPhone 14 Pro and I haven't even switched over to that phone yet. And it's honestly because my experience with this phone has been so good and just so great that I plan on using this phone probably even when the iPhone 15 comes out or maybe until this iPhone breaks. I have no reason at all to upgrade. And so far, this has been one of the best phones I've ever used in my life. Now, if you want to pick up the iPhone 13 Pro or a 14 Pro, I'll leave some linked in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, with the outside of this iPhone, I will tell you that display so far has been one of my favorite reasons of still maintaining and keeping this iPhone. So it was a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display. Now this panel of this phone, it was fairly decent resolution, 1170p, whatever you want to call it. But coming from an iPhone 12 Pro, the fact that this iPhone for one did have kind of like a little bit of a better display, but it had a 120 hertz panel that in and of itself was that big of a change that it has honestly subsided my reason of upgrading probably for the, at least for the iPhone 14 Pro so far. And I will be honest, this has been such a solid device from that perspective. Very rarely do I, you know, do I pick up an iPhone that I plan on keeping for a long period of time now because I know I'm going to get the next one. I feel like either the iPhone 13 Pro was that big of an upgrade or the iPhone 14 Pro was that small of an upgrade that it just made this phone feel that much better even when those next generation of iPhones came out. So with the display, thumbs up for me. I know the notch may bother a lot of people. It has never bothered me at all. It really doesn't matter to me that much. And I've gotten used to it probably since I bought the iPhone 10, you know, many years ago. Now we still have a lightning port at the bottom. If this ends up changing to USB-C this year and Apple does some really cool things with it, if they do something similar to Samsung Dex, then I might end up changing and, you know, actually changing to that phone. I'm still going to buy it. But if not, I may just keep the iPhone 13 Pro for a little bit longer. Now my color that I have on this one is that blue color. And I like this color a lot. It really, really stands out to me. And hopefully you like it too, because you're going to look at it the rest of the video. On the back of this iPhone, we had this frosted glass back which I felt like was pretty good you know I feel like it was pretty much the same thing as the iPhone 12 Pro which isn't a bad thing but you know it's one of those things that it's very hard to kind of upgrade one of these type of premium feeling devices like how do you plan on going above this frosted glass bag before we had the plastic bags and the glass bags so I'm wondering how Apple can top this because this still feels like the most premium feeling phones I've ever felt this the S22 Ultra some other phones that have frosted glass bags like the S22 they still feel very very premium and on the top left you have that triple camera setup you have wireless charging on this phone MagSafe capability IP certification you have a lot of stuff going on this phone that even though maybe the iPhone 14 Pro has a few more features up its sleeve, this is a very good iPhone that I really do like. At the end of the day, I think Apple has done a great job with this iPhone. Now, another big thing that we have to hit on is the camera, which we kind of talked about. So on the back of this iPhone, we have a triple camera setup. So we have a 12 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel telephoto, and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. And on the front, we have a 12 megapixel wide angle lens. Now we can do 4K at 60 on the front and the back, which is great. It's awesome having those types of resolutions, but this camera has been very, very predictable for me for the last few years or last year or two since I'll be using it. So what I mean by that is with a lot of phones out there, if I'm going to take photos in certain conditions, it will almost always be hit or miss, even in this day and age. So it does kind of bother me sometimes, but with an iPhone, for since I bought an iPhone, they've been very predictable cameras. You know what the quality of the lens you're getting when you're getting it, and it lasts like that forever. So even now when I use this camera, it still is a very good camera. But I will say I'm not really filming as many videos or taking as many videos as I used to, to be honest, or taking as many photos. Usually I take them on separate machines or other people take them on their phones. Very rarely am I taking photos on my you know, camera nowadays. But I will say this last year, I have been doing a few YouTube videos on my phone. And I, I don't know, like I feel like Apple... There's just something weird going on with the video portion of their of their cameras. I feel like they're decent, but sometimes the videos can be a little grainy and the audio is a little weird sometimes. So I do think there's still much room for improvement. When I look at and take the very same videos on my Samsung Galaxy S22, even on my Pixel 6 at the time, and even the 7, it's definitely a better video camera sometimes, but I feel like the photos are better on my iPhone, but it's been a very good camera so far. 
So it's still great. Not really too much to complain about there. And I wouldn't upgrade from this phone because of the camera, because it's still a pretty good camera for sure. Now moving on to the software and the longevity. This is an easy answer. This phone has been very good in the software department. It's still going to be getting day one updates. And for the next year or two, this phone is still going to be supported. Not for the next year or two, for the next like few years, this phone is still going to be supported. So it's not going anywhere. If you plan on buying this phone today, it's still going to be here tomorrow for sure. So I wouldn't worry about that. And probably you're going to use this phone for the next three years. You probably will upgrade this phone before it ends up not getting software support anymore. But another big thing is actually I didn't install iOS 16 yet on my iPhone. You know, I'm still rocking iOS 15.6 or 15.7, whichever one the last one was. And it's just probably the version of software I'm going to keep on my phone till I upgrade my phone. I will probably go to iOS 16 soon. But I've just, I think now would be the time to go and upgrade. I think since the last iOS update, a lot of people, you know, I've been telling a lot of people to start updating, so I should start updating myself. But so far on iOS 15, it's pretty, pretty, it's been a pretty smooth road to be honest. So moving on to the performance side of things, this phone has that Apple A15 body chip inside of it with six gigabytes of RAM. And throughout my last year and a half of owning it, it has been a very good performing type of device. I've had very few things to complain about. It has been very, very solid when it comes down to it and whenever i do pretty much anything with this phone it is a very dependable device from that performance segment so realistically speaking whenever i do anything with this phone including you know turning it on doing basic video calls photo calls or whatever like that it has been a very good phone i very rarely complain about the performance of this phone but i've had very few glitches on this phone too like every single thing i've done with this phone so far has been almost glitch free i've had very few issues from that perspective and i think that's really awesome but even even on heavy intensive applications, heavy intensive games, if I wanted a video edit on my phone, if I want to use things like iMovie or CapCut or anything even remotely close, like this phone can easily do it. I've had very few complaints from this specific device from that specific perspective. So I think that's kind of a big thing to keep in mind. Like if you're planning on buying this phone, you are still going to be getting a very fast phone and that amount of RAM, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. So even in that perspective, you're not really missing out on too much either. So I think Apple did a great job with this phone back then. And I still think the performance is very, very good in this day and age. So from that situation, I think it gets a thumbs up for me for sure as well. Now, finally, ending it off with the battery life, this one has a 3,095 milliampere hour battery. And as I mentioned before, I think Apple did a pretty good job with this battery life back then as well. I mean, it was a very good, it was good when it first came out. I think the 120 hertz panel still kind of had a little bit of kind of, you know, messing up a little bit. But I think since then, Apple's done a tremendous job with this battery life. And it's definitely gotten better and better throughout time. So right now I can get not only my full day of use, but I can get like probably two or three days of use out of this thing if I really wanted to, to be honest. And I think that's probably another thing to keep in mind as well. So to kind of sum up this whole entire video, what I'll definitely tell you is I definitely do think that, you know, the iPhone 13 Pro is still completely worth it, you know, in 2023. I think it's a great device and I think Apple did a tremendous job with it when it first came out. And I do think since then it's only gotten better. It is a very good device and, you know, unless you want to go for the 14 Pro, then I would say get this phone. It's still one of the best phones you can buy. It has gone down in the used market a little bit too, so you can get it from there. And I think, like I said before, I think Apple did a great job with it and it's 100% worth recommending to buy. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button on me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, well then.